Just a quick forward, this model will be available through my Patreon. I didn't want to string you through to the end of the video for you to find that out. And it will be available through links in the description as well if you don't want to subscribe to the Patreon. Welcome back to Hoochos. Today on Hoochos, I'm going to show you how to make this. This is the Hooch Bucket hydroponic system. This is a hydroponic system that I designed myself on a 3D modeling program to be printed at home with a 3D printer by you. Let me show you how I designed and 3D printed this system. All right, so this was actually uh, my first design uh, using 3D CAD technology. I'd never actually used 3D CAD um, before teaching myself uh, how to do this design and I've learned a lot along the way. So there are a lot of issues that I had to overcome uh, in getting this design to actually print properly. Um, because of the way that 3D printers print, uh, I needed a, a dome-like structure uh, so that I could print this bucket without supports. So the way that I achieved that uh, was to actually have the internals of the bucket uh, so that they come up at an angle that the printer can still print uh, without having huge bridges. So uh, to achieve this, um, I had the internal of the bucket come up at a 45 degree angle uh, from the side as it prints. This allows the printer to build on uh, existing print layers uh, rather than just hanging out over in the free air. And uh, in some of the early models, I had bridges along this point here, which weren't working at all. Uh, so I had to make this a domed shape um, to account for the places in the early models that the bridging wasn't reaching across and caused the filament to fail. So the way that I've designed this print is to be printed in one piece without supports. And I've achieved that fairly well. Now the design of the pot itself is to fit over uh, 100 by 55 millimeter PVC downpipe and it just fits in and wicks from below um, through this uh, net cup like protrusion on the bottom of the hooch bucket. To print the STL file for the hooch bucket, we're going to load the STL file, which can be found on my Patreon or in the links in the description. And we're gonna load it into our slicer and we're gonna put it onto an SD card, which we can then throw into our 3D printer. For this print, I'm going to use PETG and my layer height is going to be 28. My wall thickness is going to be eight. And you can see the rest of my settings there. I've got infill density at 5% with cubic. Uh, my print temperatures are all there, but this will depend on the type of filament you're going to use. Now with the PETG, I have found that it can warp a little bit, um, but it doesn't affect the integrity of the pot. With PLA, this warping doesn't happen. Uh, and I would highly recommend with the PETG filament that you use the brim adhesion. This will let the hooch bucket stick to your print surface a lot better uh, since there's not actually much in contact with the print surface uh, when you're printing this object. We'll slice this and see how long it will take and how much filament it will take up. Now I've designed this with one millimeter walls. Uh, the reason I did that is because it takes up less filament overall and it takes less time to print whilst also giving a fairly solid structure to the bucket. So we can see that that print's gonna take 17 hours and 215 grams of filament. Now you can take it down to 0% infill and the bucket will still work uh, and it only takes 200 grams of filament. So you can squeeze it down to five buckets uh, out of one kilogram of PLA or PETG. So these buckets will end up costing about six Australian dollars or $4.50 in US. We'll save that to the removable storage and we can start the print.
And what you end up with is something like these. Now I've been playing around with different filaments, different colors, uh, transparencies and such, and I've landed on black or dark filament, uh, purely to keep the light out of the buckets, and also PETG, uh, just for its UV stability, and the buckets print out really nicely with this filament. I'm also in the process of designing a transparent humidity dome on these buckets. I haven't quite perfected that design, but it will also be available uh, in the same place that you can find these buckets. So to use these buckets in a way that the nutrients top themselves up so that you can just place this system and set and forget, we're going to utilize the rain gutter grow system channels that I taught you how to build in this video. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out. Uh, it's a fantastic system and it's definitely one of my favorite systems, especially considering how long you can walk away from that system. I'm gonna have the rain gutter grow system in a different arrangement this time. So let's get to setting that up. I assembled the grow gutters in the same way that I did in the original grow gutter video. I actually used hole saws to make the float cutouts this time and I spaced the buckets along the grow gutter system. The width is determined by the plant species that you'll have in the system. So just do the recommended spacing for the species of plant you're planting. Now with the setup, I'm actually going for a tiered system layout, uh, which is facing north, which in my hemisphere means sun. And I leveled it out on the ground so that the water level within the rain gutter grow systems is level and doesn't spill out onto the ground. I then set up my res, which I had placed elevated so that it would gravity feed down into the rain gutter grow systems. These systems allow the pots to wick up from the bottom gutter and it automatically refills the pots. Now I added in plastic with a hole cut into it so that if the roots make their way down, they won't eat into that filament. I want to reuse these pots multiple times so I don't want any dead root material in the pots for the next plants. So you can use either just a flat black plastic or PVC pond liner uh, which is what I'd recommend using. I then filled up the pots with a 60-40 cocoa perlite mix and placed them in the holes on the channel of the system. I've designed the pots so that they don't fit exactly over the top so that it gives you room for error with the hole drill placement. Uh, so they should just fit in even an off-center hole. I then planted in pepper plants. I'm pretty sure these are jalapenos. Filled in the cocoa perlite around the top till the cocoa perlite was up to the brim of the hooch bucket and watered them in so that that wicking action happens pretty much immediately. I then set up the time-lapse camera and it's ready to grow.
and there it is. That's the Hooch Bucket hydroponic system. I'll just quickly explain the system for anyone who hasn't seen the original video. So in this reservoir is hydroponic nutrient. Uh, it's a specific uh, flowering plant hydroponic nutrient and it gravity feeds down to this float switch here. And as the plants use up the water and nutrient within the system, uh, this float switch lowers, it gravity feeds down into this pipe, which is sealed at both ends. At the other end, I've got a screw cap so you can empty it and change the nutrient from time to time if you need to. And due to the wicking effect that the cocoa perlite within this system uh, has, uh, when this neck cup is dropped into this two inch hole saw hole, uh, it drops into the water. The water and nutrient then wick up into the pot, making it available to the plants. The plants will then transpire, use up the nutrient and the water and create fruit and more plant matter, which is exactly how hydroponics works. And these are just 100 mil pipes that I've cut in half, cut notches in, and they just fit over the top. And that's to protect the nutrient from sunlight and reduces the amount of algae that grows in the system. Now I've actually designed these buckets not only to fit on ground sitting systems, they also work in raised channels such as these and because of the flat design on the bottom, the pots actually just are supported by the channels off the ground. So you don't need to support the bottom of these pots for them to be stable on the channel. Uh, the reason that I've got these edges on the side is so that if the plants get heavy, when you are actually sitting them on a flat surface, they have a greater footprint and won't tip over as easily. They also help to stop these buckets from moving around or falling from side to side on the channels. I'm also in the process of creating a round pipe design where I use a similar pot design so that we can then have this sitting on top of round pipe systems. And the net cup will then hold the bucket in place on those systems. I've actually got a heap of design ideas for hydroponic systems, and I'm really excited to bring them to life with 3D CAD and 3D printing. And if you wanna support me in doing this, head over to my Patreon where you can find this design. All the designs can also be found in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of Who Chose. Happy hydroponicking, and I'll see you next time on Who Chose.